And what is up, YouTube? My name is G3Irony, and today we are talking about, well, what about? About things that didn't get announced at ExileCon. So yes, we'll talk a little bit about some predictions that you as a community have all made about what we all thought was going to take place at ExileCon and get announced. But we're also going to talk about things that did not get announced or maybe were vaguely touched on during the time of PoE's massive, most massive live event ever, of course. ExileCon a week ago. And of course we didn't hear about some things or we got vague ambiguous responses about certain things like the labyrinth, like trade, like crossplay, or like server stability. So if you've got questions about any of those things or you are wondering about those particular topics, well this is the right place to have these discussions. And I'm sure the discussions that we start here today are probably going to last us over the next year, realistically, until 4.0 drops. All that being said, if you're a veteran of the channel, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, you can like, subscribe, and ding the bell for more video discussions just like this one. And a big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who do, do such a great job of making all of these sorts of discussions happen. So, let's jump right into it. First off, let's start with some predictions that went right and a few that went wrong. So, a week ago, right before the massive ExileCon event launched, we asked a series of poll questions, basically asking people, hey, what's your predictions? Now's the time to get them in before the announcements of ExileCon come out. And essentially, it's the last chance for you to brag if you got something right or if you were horribly wrong on something. So we at first asked, tomorrow during the 4.0 announcement, GGG will announce dot 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 and fill in the sentence. And so we got some great responses on this. Zavol Null said improved server side code, which to a some extent we actually did get announcements, at least some teases about this. So first off, uh, good news that PoE2 is going to be moving to Vulkan. So those of you that are in uh, the coding world, you know a bit more in terms of the depth of what that means. For those of us who are laymen, who are not necessarily <laughs> as uh, talented and as knowledgeable when it comes to coding, it essentially means there is going to be some more stability simply because of the way that things are being built for Path of Exile 2. We had another prediction here from Galadrin, 1980, that said new story acts. Boom, Galadrin, you got it right. We're getting seven new story acts that are going to go along with PoE 2 for us to play through as a brand new campaign with new characters and with a bunch of new ascendancies to boot. Chad B said character customization and or races. You're absolutely right, Chad. One of the things that GGG doubled down on after the massive uh, world championship race, as it was you know, titled at ExileCon, is that uh, Jonathan and Chris both said that they wanted to recommit themselves to races and include more opportunities for racing to, uh, to grow as a side of Path of Exile and as a community, because there are several different racers, not just at the top end, but a lot of different players that like to test themselves and push themselves to what they're capable of doing as they are racing. And we did get some firm statements from GGG that they're interested in expanding that particular uh, opportunistic horizon for players to engage in. Fossey Bear called it. He said shape-shifting. Yes, we are getting shape-shifting to come in PoE2, and we've already done a whole discussion on that. You can feel free to click on our videos, and if you want to have just a focused discussion on all that we know about shape-shifting thus far, but way to nail it right on the head, Fossey. Also, Torst, Tornstein the Fallen said a new endgame mechanic that is, of course, coming with the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion. It is a completely new uh, version of the Atlas. I guess if you wanted to say, well, we were hoping to get away from Atlas and maps entirely and do something completely different, well, that's not in the books. But what is in the books is a completely revamped Atlas system, completely new bosses for us to take on, and a completely new way for us to interact with the Atlas in such a way that Shaper and Elder are going to be incredibly incredibly rare encounters and are no longer going to dictate the meta as they once did during the war for the Atlas. Spencer Stewart said a graphics overhaul in the end 
of the War for the Atlas. Spencer, you absolutely nailed it. You called the end of the War of the Atlas. And we are getting several graphical and visual updates throughout the next year. So these aren't just going to be graphical updates that are going to happen in 2.0 or in PoE 2 for 4.0, but rather these are going to be graphics overhauls that take place with each major patch. We're going to get better visuals and accompanying better optimization with each and every league. That's what GGG has said they are committed to, and so we can hold them to that and have some hope that we're going to see results of that, even starting now uh, with the 3.9 December 13th release of Metamorph League and the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion. So we've got some more predictions that went right and some more predictions that went wrong. We asked the poll this way. We said if you could only have one of the following things announced for ExileCon uh, and the 4.0 Mega Expansion, what would it be? Well, Gubbs said he wanted two things. First, to not have to level through the 10x three to five times every season. Well, you sort of got that, but you sort of didn't. So in PoE2, we've got seven new acts to work through. Uh, and so now you can choose whether or not you want to go through the 10-act story campaign of PoE1, or if you want to go through the new seven-act story of PoE2. Both of these particular campaigns are going to run parallel to one another for your character's purposes, so they will have a shared end game uh, at the very end of both either PoE 1's 10 act story campaign after you kill Katava the second time, or whatever the boss is going to be at the end of Act 7 uh, as you come out of PoE 2. The second thing Gubbs wanted was for endgame bosses to be hard to clear instead of hard to access. This is something that the development team addressed several times at ExileCon throughout multiple different interviews with multiple different streamers and on multiple different Q&A platforms. GGG is clearly committed to adding more difficulty to the game through actual challenging content as opposed to simply through random access or randomized access. So that's something that they've said they're committed to. The way how that's going to look, we're not quite sure yet, although we did get some snippets of what early uh, bosses, early game bosses can look like, and there are definitely some mechanical twists. The trick to designing bosses, though, and we've got to sympathize a little bit with GGG, is that it can be difficult to design a boss and make it interesting and unique. Let's take, uh, for instance, the uh, Brine King, for instance, he's got some very interesting mechanics and was seen as this like new, you know, uh, uh, dawn for PoE bossing when he first came out. Then again, once you run through that boss several different times, you learn the mechanics of the boss fight and pretty soon it's no longer difficult to clear, but rather because you've memorized the fight or because you become familiar with the fight, it's now a lot simpler, right? So building that familiarity means that the difficulty that was originally intended and designed actually goes down. So there is a, a push and a pull here when it comes to designing bosses. And uh, we did get to see several different streamers rip to various Act 1 bosses as they were playing through PoE 2. So there is definitely an intent there at GGG to have bosses be more difficult and to return to a time in, in really in Ray class when bosses are known for their difficulty. Okay, moving on. General Dawn said more graphic updates, RTX mode, and maybe new classes or new ascendancies. You absolutely got that right, General Dawn. We are going to get uh, new ascendancies, not necessarily new classes. We're getting new uh, graphical classes for PoE2 where every single character model has been revamped. Uh, and we're getting 19 new ascendancies that correspond to those new character models. They will be the same classes that we are familiar with. They're going to be the Shadow. They're going to be the Ranger the Witch, the Templar, the Marauder, the Duelist, and the Scion. However, they'll look different, and their ascendancy nodes will all be different. Fabian Stammer says, as a casual player, I'd love to see permanently balanced skills. I don't get very far within one league, and I cannot build long term, because my characters from each league are usually useless in the next. This is very frustrating to me. I'm pretty sure I'd play PoE way more if this wasn't the case. Well, the issue of balance constantly comes up, and this is one of the things that, as a prediction, we're not sure about, because GGG didn't say anything about whether or not they were going to continue with their balance structure, balancing around three archetypes, essentially, per major patch. We didn't get any comments on that. What we did get comments on 
is a reworking of socketing skills to hopefully make gems more available for multiple different six link setups and at least as a part of that or a part of the intent behind that is for ggg to see more skills open up and get added onto characters such that rather than saying we need to now balance everything around one another and make all skills equal to one another we'll simply essentially give you more slots to jam in more skills and see if that helps with balance so we've yet to see if that's going to work or not and we'll see uh, obviously over the discussion over the next year whether or not that proves to be a successful design choice but that's where they're moving at the current moment for balance Jazz says alternate mapping and really hoping they bring in some major performance improvements as well a lot of builds can't be played even on decent rigs simply because of the FPS drops and whatnot. The good news for this jazz is that we are not going to have a separate engine. Now a lot of players, whether uh, it was on the live stream last weekend, whether it was on our stream right here on the G3 channel or on the live stream uh, and the Q&As at Exalcon, a lot of people were really worried uh, simply about FPS drops and about performance and about a new engine. A lot of people were asking, are we going to get a new engine and essentially say, hey, when there's PoE2 that comes out, am I going to have to go download a new game for BOE2 and is everything going to, to move around? Well, the good news is, is no. And the reason why that's good news is because they're rebuilding and constantly reworking the engine that they're working on, it allows them to update things in a modular sense. In other words, when GGG identifies that they need to update a part of Path of Exile, whether that's for a performance issue, a graphical issue, or for something behind the scenes that we wouldn't otherwise know about, they can simply go in and compartmentalize their updates as needs be. They don't have to... Uh, relegate themselves to building a new engine every couple of years and then migrating everything over. It also means that you and I aren't going to lose all of our stash tabs and all of our MTX and all of our supporter packs that we've already purchased in the game. We get to keep all of that stuff in PoE2. We will be getting something of an alternate to mapping in that we'll be getting a new atlas, a new way to map, uh, but it won't necessarily be a completely different way to mapping. So no adventure mode for those of you who are familiar with the Diablo 3 system. There won't be an adventure mode at least as of yet that has been announced for poe2 cyher187 says none of them i like 10 total new acts and adventure mode well you're getting one of these and not the other no adventure mode but you are getting seven new acts with poe2 Sergeant Dredd says, less zoom zoom. Back to what PoE used to be like when every skill didn't have exactly the same as the rest. Click once, screen explodes. The era of PoE that I sadly missed, I started playing during the Abyss League, but I've seen and heard from a friend who's been playing since release how much better it was, and I can see it being true even though I never experienced it myself. This is definitely something that they are looking at by trying to open up the way how difficulty is approached in PoE2. So if players want to have a more grindy, more gritty, more difficult leveling experience, we can already see simply in the difference between 10 acts versus 7 acts, there's going to be more stuff that's compacted into each act as you are progressing in PoE2 than there will be in PoE1. And it could be that overall, racers are eventually going to have to tell us which of these two acts is actually faster to get or not acts, which of these two stories is actually going to be faster to get through. So that's from the efficiency side of things. But from the difficulty side of things, this really opens up the things from a design perspective for GGG to say, we want to make PoE2 and its associated seven act campaign as difficult as possible. And if players really want to beat their head into the wall and return to a time where it's less zoom zoom and a bit more difficult to progress, then boom, we've got an option for players over here. If players just want to go zoom zoom and rush through things that are familiar, then we've got an option over here. So I think that's some of the design intent that GGG spoke to during ExileCon between the differences between the 10 act story campaign of PoE1 and the seven act more difficult approach and more revamped way of approaching themselves to difficulty on bosses, to difficulty on mobs, and to difficulty on layouts that will all be coming with Path of Exile 2. Okay, so let's clearly and succinctly say, this is what we are getting. Before we complain about all the things that we didn't get, which I'm sure we'll all do over the next year, this is what we were announced as to getting with all of the various trailers and hype that came 
with Exalcon. So we're getting PoE2 4.0, and unless you know a slip of my tongue in future discussions, I will no longer be referring to 4.0 as 4.0. I will from now on be referring to it as Path of Exile 2 or PoE2. Not PoE 2.0, PoE2. That's what we are getting. That was by far the biggest announcement. It's got millions of views on multiple different trailers and on multiple different announcement page and multiple different articles written from all sorts of different gaming journalist outlets. PoE2 is coming with new visuals, a new campaign of 7X. It's got shape shifting. It's got 19 new ascendancies, not just rebalancing current ascendancies, but 19 additional ascendancies and a new socketing system that is going to change the way how we all v evaluate items as well as gems themselves. We're also getting the Conquerors of the Atlas expansion that is all coming out December 13th and the Metamorph League that is also coming out December 13th and accompanying all of that is a new end game with new bosses, a new Atlas layout, new way to progress your Atlas, a new way to, to essentially min-max the hell out of your Atlas in order for profit or for speed or for XP, a new boss killing emphasis during the league for Metamorph where we're essentially creating our own Frankenstein monsters for uh, for boss killing and for rewards. And then we're also going to have a bow and it seems to be totem style reworks during the Metamorph League. And then, oh yeah, by the way, do you guys have phones? Because Path of Exile Mobile will also be coming out. So these are all of the things that we are going to be getting over the next year or so from Grinding Gear Games for Path of Exile. Lots of things to get excited about here, but... That being said, what about what we aren't getting? There was a whole bunch of comments and a whole bunch of questions from a whole lot of very curious fans and exiles that wanted to know, well, what about these other topics? What about the labyrinth? How is the labyrinth going to work? A couple of things, a, a couple of factual things just to sort out here. First off, about the lab. We know for a fact that the lab is a POE1 staple. We know that for a fact, that that's where it is right now. What we don't know is if the lab is going to be used in PoE2, and there was some confusion even at ExileCon that there are still conversations going on about how characters are going to ascend in PoE2. So we're not sure about the labyrinth. Some of the conversations that even took place at ExileCon hinted that the lab might actually get pulled away from ascending in PoE1 and kept for a completely different system altogether. So there was a lot of confusion about, well, what about the lab and what's going to happen to it? Are we ever going to get reworks for all of the numerous enchants that are out there? Uh, and are we ever going to get an improvement to that system? So there really wasn't anything definitive, but there were a lot of little factual hints that discussions are going on at GGG where there is some heavy em emphasis from the design team that the lab is an area of concern and they want to address it. Secondly, what about performance? So we heard lots of things uh, that were positive about performance, positive about the way how things are going, but we didn't necessarily hear really anything about, well, let's say, for instance, the first two weeks of League Cycles. It seems to be that things have gotten, yes, better in a lot of ways, but maybe worse in others. As, as Path of Exile continues to grow in its popularity, a lot of players drop off from PoE within the first two weeks, and it's not just because of the League mechanic. A lot of the time, it's due to performance. There is nothing that will shut down a player's motivation to play a game faster than the game kicking you out or telling you that you can't access certain areas or that maybe your build simply can't be handled by your computer. So lots of questions relating to performance and lots of different things that were stated, again, hopefully that will be addressed through the compartmentalized upgrading that is going on through each of the upcoming expansions and updates but there still remain to be lots of questions, especially on the GGG server side of things and the way how they handle uh, the first couple of weeks of leagues. Lots of questions that still remain. Thirdly, what about balance? GGG really did not talk much about balance. We don't have any clue right now if they are going to continue with this recycle the meta, uh, nerf something, make something OP, nerf something, make something OP. We have, we have no idea how balance is going to be approached, especially now that we're going to have, you know, a bunch of characters and ascendancies that are sitting over here in PoE 1 to be balanced, and then we've got a bunch of characters and a bunch of ascendancies over here in PoE 2 to be balanced around. We have absolutely no idea about what it is that are the priorities of the balance team at the moment, 
for 3.9 and for moving forward and the way how they're approaching it, other than to say what is the track record of Path of Exile in the past. The track record over the last year and a half has been to make three builds in their development cycle to hype up those three particular builds as archetypes and then to shift the meta around those archetypes. That's what we know thus far and we have not heard any indicators or seen any indicators that that is going to stop. In fact, if anything, it might actually be that there's still going to be those three archetypes, but it could actually be that one to two of those archetypes actually continue to dominate popularity as we've seen in Legion, as we saw in Synthesis, and as we saw most recently during Blight League. So we really just don't know how GGG is going to approach balance with a whole bunch of other stuff that's going to come along with it. And by the way, did you know that Path of Exile 2 is going to have a completely different passive tree? Yeah, that's right. Completely different passive tree. One that they were not ready to show us at ExileCon whatsoever. So now not only do we have to think about balancing PoE1's passive tree and all of the accompanying stats that come with that, but then also PoE2's uh, passive tree and what comes with that. I am sure over the next year and a half, as we get access to more numbers and to more previews for the passive tree and to more previews for ascendancies, there are just going to be times and especially leagues and especially updates where if we continue to have archetypes be the way that GGG is going to balance things, it could be that there's a league where it's just better to level up and to experience the campaign of PoE1 and the 10 acts that are associated with that. And there might be other leagues where maybe ascendancies are more accessible and faster and better and on the top end of things from PoE2 and from the seven acts that are coming there. So there is at least for me, some trepidation about how they're going to handle all of this new stuff coming in with the current iteration and design philosophy about balance. Definitely some concerns there. Fourthly, what about trade? I have done a video on trade. We did a long, I believe it's a 50 minute discussion on an auction house and on trade where we look at GGG's uh, previous stances and previous statements through the ba balance manifesto. We take a look at different comments and different, essentially different pros and cons to different arguments about how to revamp trade and if it would, you know, accomplish positive things overall for the community or negative things overall for the community. The reality is, and this, you, you, this is good news, this is bad news, this is just news, folks. Just take it for what it is. We did not hear a single thing about trade for PoE2 or revamping trade for present Path of Exile. The only thing that we heard about trade, desiring any kind of feedback, was for PoE Mobile and how trade is going to function within PoE Mobile. Other than that, we have heard nothing. If you're upset about that, if you're bummed that there isn't some announcement about trade, if you wish there was an auction house, or if you wish that there was an NPC bot that would allow you to trade while you're in maps or in the labyrinth, look, these are great suggestions and great discussions to continue having, but the fact is, is GGG didn't say anything in ExileCon that probably would have gotten a standing ovation at ExileCon had they said anything, and they said nothing. So, I'm on record as saying this in the past, and I'll continue to go on record saying it in the future. If they had any kind of major changes that they were going to make about trade, it would have been announced at ExileCon for PoE2. They didn't make any announcements. Therefore, trade's going to be the same. That That's it. That, I think that's the only logical conclusion that we can come to at this point in time. Unless they just totally pull out the rug from underneath us and say, hey, you know what? We said we were never going to change trade, but now we decided we will. Until we see that statement from Chris or from some other high-ranking member at GGG, the reality is, is trade today is going to be what trade is going to be moving forward. Fifthly, and finally, what about console quality of life? I know there's a bunch of console players out there in our G3 community because a bunch of you have vocalized just all of the numerous issues of quality of life that need to be improved on the various editions of Path of Exile that are available on console. And the reality is, is that console is typically a bit behind where PC is at. GGG has made great strides since releasing on PlayStation and on Xbox to try to bring release dates to be simultaneous, but then we've also seen over the last year that those dates have started to be staggered again. So console quality of life, unfortunately, I, I wish I had good news for you. We just don't. We didn't get a bunch of great news about console quality of life coming out of ExileCon. If you have got great news that you found somewhere from a quote from some GGG member about consoles, feel free to link that down below in the comment because I have not been able to find any kind of good news about console quality of life coming out of ExileCon or quotes since ExileCon related 
to console quality of life. So if you found one of those, feel free to drop it down in the comments below and I'll happily tag that uh, just so that way our console friends in our communities can actually have some good news because I heard zero good news about that. So these are all the things that we, at least for the moment, aren't getting. So I've got a couple of thoughts. First off, this particular photo that you see here, this is the timeline that they showed, that uh, Chris and Jonathan showed as being the timeline for updates leading up to Path of Exile 2, which in this particular photo is addressed as 4.0. You can see that there is a Conquerors of the Atlas expansion logo that is at the top. That's essentially where we're at. You know how sometimes you go into a building and the building will have a generalized map and it'll point on the map, you are here? Well, this timeline is essentially that, but for Path of Exile updates. So, where Conquerors of the Atlas is at, that's where we are now. You are here, the 3.9 expansion and update is coming out December 13th. It'll be the Metamorph League and Conquerors of the Atlas. 3.10 will be the next one. My best guess is that this will come at the end of February or at the beginning of March. That'll be when the next particular league drops. Then 3.11 will most likely drop in June of 2020. And then 3.12 will most likely drop at the end of August or beginning of September. And they have said that they will not release Path of Exile 2, referred to as 4.0 in this particular timeline. They will not release it until it's ready. Meaning that that, that last block before the 4.0 in this particular timeline could mean that there will be a 3.13, a 3.14. We don't know. I want to make this clear for our discussion right here, right today, and go on record as saying this. A lot of people have slammed a lot of other gaming companies for being vague or ambiguous with their dates. I've got to at least say this just to maintain my own integrity. GGG did not give us a hard and fast date of when Path of Exile 2 is coming. It has been rumored that it will be the December update of 2020. But because GGG has been so committed to saying we want to make this well rather than committing to a deadline, that I think that that's something that's good. I, I, I think that that's something that I would much rather have as a player. I want a finished product as much as possible as opposed to a bug-ridden something that just got released due to a deadline. That being said, I've got to point that out, that they don't have a deadline set for 4.0. So, we'll, so while we all want to meme and make jokes about other particular games that don't have dates yet, we've at least got to say we, we have a vague idea of when PoE2 is coming, but we don't have a hard and fast date yet. So that's the first disclaimery thing to say. All right, now, in general, my thoughts are this. In general, stuff is coming between now and PoE2. That's in general. All of these various things, quality of life things, uh, updates to optimization, updates for performance, updates to various classes, updates to ascendancies, all of the things that essentially the, that Grinding Gear Games has done over the last year, they are going to continue to do. This means, because in general, we have some very vague timelines here, we actually could see a massive labyrinth rework. We actually could see a massive trade work. We actually could see some massive quality of life balancing and optimization implemented in between now and whenever PoE2 comes out. Stuff is coming between now and PoE2. Chris made this very, very clear as he was presenting the timeline and presenting to the audience Path of Exile 2. Path of Exile 2 is going to come out when it is ready, but included with Path of Exile 2 is going to be 7 acts, 19 new ascendancies, 7 new character models. Everything else that was pitched and promoted at ExileCon, visual updates, graphical updates, performance updates, ascendancy balancing, skill reworks, nearly everything else is coming in between now and PoE2. So, I think that's good news. I think that's good news because it means the game is going to look a lot fresher and a lot nicer over the next year with every single update. It means monster behavior is probably going to improve. It means difficulty is probably going to improve in some way. It means the meta is going to get shaken up. All because GGG is still working and implementing these things leading up to PoE2 rather than simply saying we're pushing everything to one big deadline and we'll just have one massive new game that we're releasing. I love this approach to development, 
both as a consumer as well as as somebody that's worked in the gaming industry this essentially means that all of the developers at ggg they can continue with their normal working days they don't have to deal with that fabled crunch that so many people inside the gaming industry have to deal with yes are there going to be times that's more stressful than others absolutely but it doesn't mean that you're going to have developers coders engineers and visual artists working at all hours of days and weeks and missing out on vacation and family time and regular life because their work for months on end failed to plan in advance. So in general, this stuff is coming out between now and PoE2. I think that's great. I think it's great for GGG. I think it's a healthy business practice. So that way you keep the talented people in-house that you want to keep. And I think it's great for us as consumers because it means that we don't have to wait until PoE2 for a whole bunch of this stuff to come out. So I think that a lot of this stuff that is coming is going to be great secondly mm, some stuff we're never going to get it I, I just don't think we're going to get it so while i know i just said maybe we'll get a trade overhaul in between now and poe2 i just don't see it i don't see it i don't see it convince me down below in the comments why from ggg's perspective they would all of a sudden make a trade system overhaul if your argument is going to be something like well from the business perspective they would get a whole bunch more users or they would retain a whole bunch more users i would love to see the data that you've got that suggests that because right now we don't have that data path of exile is growing at massive massive rates and continues to compete with other massive industry giants that are releasing games and they don't have a trade overhaul they don't in fact, some players have actually asked for something called Solo Self Found, and they've provided servers specifically for Solo Self Found to simply avoid trade altogether. GGG has shown themselves to be more willing to de dedicate developer time and space and support for players who don't even want to engage with trade rather than overhauling the trade. Again, that might be something you don't agree with. That might be something you don't like. I'm simply asking you to try to convince me why, from GGG's perspective, they would actually overhaul trade over the next year. I don't think it's happening. Secondly, I don't think we will ever get balance as a lot of people mean balance. If what you mean when you say, hey, Iron, I really hope that we're going to get balance in Path of Exile. If you mean corollary or competitive skills that are relatively one-to-one -to, -one to one another in terms of their clear speed, in terms of their quality of life, and in terms of their availability, it's just not going to happen. It just won't. There are some skills that mechanically are going to be superior to others, depending on when the most recent update was. There are some skills that are going to be... Uh, numerically superior to others because of simply because of their values are better than others until the next update and the reevaluation of it there are going to be some skills which are simply more desirable because people like the way that they look and the way they feel that's the reality of it we as consumers have got preferences and it is in grinding gear games best interest at the moment based on their business model to not have a perfectly balanced game or even a game that is slightly close to being balanced it's actually in their best interest to continue to rotate things you can feel free to disagree with me down below i'm happy to hear arguments to the contrary but that's the pattern of behavior that they've shown and they're adding a whole new passive tree, a bunch of new skills, and 19 new ascendancies. I don't think GGG is going to go back to the drawing board and say, we've been unsuccessful with our balance model at the moment, and we need to reevaluate everything. I don't see that happening in the future. Well, those are some of my thoughts, but what are your thoughts over the next year and, of course, over the upcoming announcements and, of course, the things that didn't get announced? So drop me a comment down below and let me know what has you the most excited or happy about what was announced at ExileCon for the upcoming year for Path of Exile. And then, of course, I want to hear about what disappointed you or maybe frustrated you about the announcements or maybe what wasn't announced. Maybe you do wish that something that we've chatted about in today's discussion was announced at ExileCon and, and had a main means and a plan for implementation drop me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are thanks so much for watching and i hope that this upcoming league the metamorph league the expansion the atlas of conquerors and poe2 is a time when a mirror of calandra drops for you Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.